Good afternoon to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Saturday, the 30th of July, 2016. Let's take a look at what we have out there. Invest Area 97L is the big topic of conversation this weekend. 96L farther to the east here really won't be an issue. The tropical wave energy that's associated with it will continue to move on off to the west-northwest with time, and it could end up somewhere over here in the next week to 10 days, so we'll have to see where it does, in fact, plant its feet later on and if there's much left of it energy-wise to be concerned with. But for right now, the main issue is going to be 97L. As it cruises towards the Caribbean Sea here, we can look at it on a satellite loop. The visible satellite imagery, you can see clearly it's starting to wind up as best it can. It's moving to the west and west-northwest fairly quickly, kind of caught in this surge of energy that came off the African coast several days ago. And it's amazing how these pockets of energy work and how sometimes they could be embedded within the Saharan air layer, sometimes out in front of it. It's really fascinating that dry, dusty conditions over Africa can occasionally push these systems off, these tropical waves of low pressure and embedded moisture, and boom, that energy takes shape over the warm tropical waters. As you can see, this is trying to do counterclockwise rotation. Weak, but it is there, and it's headed for the Caribbean here. The Lesser Antilles, the Leeward Islands, you're going to be the first to be impacted. In fact, there's some squally weather moving through now. And as this system moves through, keep in mind, especially boaters and specifically small craft operators, do be mindful of the passage of this tropical wave and associated surface low. You know, if you're out there in a small boat, sailboat, whatever, some of these systems, these little popcorn thunderstorms in here can produce lightning. You usually don't have a lot of lightning in a well-developed hurricane. But in these formative stages, it's not uncommon, especially with some dry air around, to get lightning. So just be aware of that. It's been a while since you've had a, su a substantial tropical wave pass through the Lesser Antilles. So just be mindful of it. Later on down the road, possibly impacting Jamaica. Uh, even if it passes to the south, Jamaica would be on the northern side of that circulation and probably some inclement weather headed your way. And maybe even for the Cayman Islands over here, still a little too early to know that for sure. Back to the east, you can see struggling 96L, still a very stable air mass sitting back over in this direction. The Saharan air layer definitely loosening its grip, but there's still enough mid-level dry air to keep a cap on things over here in the extreme eastern Atlantic. So here it is on the infrared. You can see this is blossoming. And overall, more convective activity or upward motion thunderstorms. This is an upper level low carved out here. Uh, a little bit of low pressure at the surface here, a little surface trough and a front moving off the mid-Atlantic states, a little convection here in the Bay of Campeche and then over the southeast Pacific. But overall, you can see that the basin as a whole definitely has a lot more energy here with sh uh, showers and thunderstorms, even though we are within this suppressed phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation, a fancy way of saying that things really shouldn't be that busy right now because it's kind of like a big hand of squashing development, uh, but it doesn't seem to be um, limiting it completely, as you can clearly see on this satellite shot. Now, another thing that's going to be happening as the tropical wave here, 97L, continues moving westward, it's going to be running into higher and higher sea surface temperatures, but more importantly, upper ocean heat content. The warm water extends deep into the ocean, not just at the skin of the surface of the ocean. And these heat content values just get higher and higher the more westward it progresses into the Caribbean Sea. And in fact, the highest ocean heat content at the top of the scale over in the Northwest Caribbean Sea, very common to see that maybe not this early in the season. A lot of these water temperatures in this region are running above the long-term average. In fact, the main development region, this is a great little time series graph from the very talented Levi Cowan at tropicaltidbits.com right there. I want to make sure I give the credit to where credit is due. Nice graph showing the progression of the main development region sea surface temperature anomaly. That's the departure from normal, the anomaly 
all the way back to May. You can see we had a dip here and then kind of up and down, really not making much progress. But then lately, a very steep rise so that the average right now is positive 0.78 degrees Celsius above the long-term average. And what does that mean? That's pretty substantial. You know, if you turn your bath uh, three-quarters of a degree Celsius warmer, you might not notice a difference. But in the tropics, a degree Celsius, a half a degree Celsius, adds a lot of energy to that water. And so this region through here, the main development region, running three-quarters of a degree Celsius on average across the whole area. I mean, there's some areas that are more than a degree. I mean, you know how averages work, right? So that's really impressive there that we're seeing that. And that will help to aid the development of this system uh, as it continues to move west here. It's just to the east of the islands. And once it gets into the Caribbean, it'll start to really encounter that increasing upper ocean heat content. Uh, the vorticity signature from the University of Wisconsin site, vorticity is spin in the atmosphere. The more round this looks, generally speaking, the better organized it is. That conservation of angular momentum, a skater pulling his or her arms in and they spin faster, that's the vorticity concentrating around a common area of low pressure in this case. So when you see vorticity stretched out over a long area like this front that's come off uh, North America, well, that's different. And so this is not bundling energy. This is down in the deep tropics. So we'll keep an eye on this over the next few days. You see, conversely, 96L is much more sort of blob shaped. Almost looks like one of those goldfish, right? You got kids, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Looks like those yummy goldfish. Um, moving on. So the upper air chart, again, a wonderful feature from the University of Wisconsin. And they've color coded it so we can pick out the areas of green, yellow, red, which of course green means go, red means stop in most of life's activities, and that's the same thing in the tropics. Generally speaking, favorable upper level winds, not the best right now. We do have this upper trough and low pressure area carved out. Let me draw in yellow, that might show up a little better. So this is not very favorable over here, but we do have this anticyclonic flow where the air fans out clockwise over 97L. So let's watch what happens taking this map into consideration. This is the GFS 12Z run from this morning. It means that it was initialized at 12 Zulu time, which is about 8 o'clock Eastern time, for example. All right, so here's the Eastern Caribbean islands. There's Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, Hispaniola, Cuba, etc. Jamaica is there. All right, got your bearings. So this is the upper air anticyclone that is situated near our tropical system trying to develop and this is the very sharp upper level low unfavorable conditions to its west look what happens in 72 hours time by this time the tropical system should be sitting in here somewhere and look it's now under a much more favorable environment very light upper level winds clockwise flow you don't have a sort of jet stream of energy, for example, coming across it like this, you know, like we see up here in the subtropics in the North Atlantic. This is your umbrella of protection so that the system can grow vertically. Those clouds can spread out at the top of the atmosphere, at least the uh, sensible weather atmosphere at the bottom of the stratosphere, for example. And you get that anvil shape look to some of those clouds. You, you've seen it. It's been a while, but you know what it looks like. Then by day five, the system probably near the Yucatan somewhere, more than likely. And look, it's right underneath a very favorable upper environment. Light winds in here, 5 to 10 knots at the most. But more importantly, it looks like it's centered underneath that upper level anticyclone aloft, which would be very favorable for development. And this would be happening over that very warm water of the Northwest Caribbean. Where does it end up from there? Obviously, folks along the Gulf Coast including Gulf Coast Mexico, are certainly interested in that. A little too soon to say for sure, but one thing you can also see even in this chart, which is showing the 200 millibar pattern, which is fairly high in the atmosphere, there's a pretty deep ridge of high pressure sitting over the southern United States and eastern North America. Typically, that would tend to drive systems like this south and not allow them to turn north 
because of that ridge being eroded. And you can see that. It's a nice dome of high pressure here, outlined in the atmosphere, trough off the east coast. If something were out here, it would more than likely try to get steered into that trough, for example. Uh, but this system cruising through the Caribbean more than likely is going to be suppressed to the south the way I see it now. So I would say, you know, anywhere from Brownsville, Texas, south into the Bay of Campeche would be the area that needs to watch this the most. But certainly anybody from the Texas-Louisiana border all the way through the Yucatan, especially the Yucatan, Belize, Cancun, and the north coast of Central America, Honduras, Nicaragua, you need to watch this even closer than that. But as a direct threat to the United States, if I had to speculate, I would say right now those chances appear to be low. However, we're talking five to seven days plus, and we know how things can change. But typically this time of year, with the very hot weather we have over the eastern part of the United States, that is because of deep layer ridging in the atmosphere, and hurricanes generally don't turn, and just assuming this becomes a storm or a hurricane, they don't turn into ridges like that. Those are larger, denser areas of uh, air in the atmosphere, literally like a mountain of air. And the system, the tropical system, is a much more um, less dense area of low pressure, and they typically do not head into large areas of high pressure. So we'll see how this evolves right now. Just to recap, if you were in the Eastern Caribbean, you've got this to deal with first as a slowly developing tropical wave. Beyond that, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. All right? Well, that is it from me for today. Hopefully you learned a lot. We're all in this together trying to see what happens as we go along. Nothing's ever the same. You're never going to find something that fits a pattern of something previously exactly. So we're looking at all these puzzle pieces together, and we can hopefully figure it out, and everybody will be ready even if this system doesn't affect the lower 48, it could affect Mexico, and we certainly want people there to be prepared as well. Have a good rest of your Saturday. Thanks for tuning in. I am Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow.